This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Oh yeah, that's definitely Michiru Root. The girl told me, our world is a box. In childhood, everyone's convinced that Snow White winds are budding on their back. We tell ourselves, someday I'll fly from here to some strange and wonderful place. We think that by going where we want to go, we'll magically become the person we want to be. But in reality, there is nowhere else to go, and no feathers to lift us out of the dust. When we finally realize this, it's hard to overstate how bitter a disappointment it is. Maybe you yourself remember that adolescent feeling of powerlessness and futility. Why was I born in the first place? Why do I have to die? That's just how the world works, of course. But we're too fragile and self-centered to accept that. We spend years muttering to ourselves, I'm different from the rest. I have to be. When that delusion gives way under the weight of our own mediocrity, we cling next to the thought that somebody will take me away from here. Some special existence will swoop down and pluck me out of this ugly, petty, tedious world. Maybe I can't fly, but someone who can will carry me off to the promised land. And when that too is revealed to be nothing but an empty fantasy, the box slowly, solemnly slides shut above us. We have our air holes, barely sufficient to keep us breathing, but our illusionary freedom shrivels and dies. You are such an uplifting person to be around, Yuji. The sky is an impenetrable lid above us, an impassive ruler that claims our feathers as tribute. That's the world we live in. Sure. Class is over and done with for the day, but some of us are still hanging around the classroom. Could have just returned to the dorm by myself, but I was only a few pages away from finishing a book, so I decided to stay at my desk and indulge. Hmm, not a bad story. Well, the Ramona books are pretty great. The book was Chasing the Dragonfly, Volume 3, by Sindel Akira. Oh, so it's not the Ramona books. Having found the lesser emperor tucked away in a corner of the city at the end of Volume 2, I would have never, or I never would have expected Wataru to end up like this. I'm actually interested in reading some other stuff by this author now, but this book is a badly banged-up antique that seems to have passed through half a dozen used bookstores by now. On top of which, the publisher is some company called Shikagindao Books, but I've never heard of them before. Probably went out of business decades ago. Guess there's no point wasting my time looking. Oh, you forgot. You have book expert Sak uh, Sakaki here. Yeah, pretty decent stuff. Thanks, as always. Did I? I don't know about that. I see. Guess I got a little too caught up in the book's world. Concentration and imagination are closely linked. As an experiment, you can try memorizing the scene before your eyes, then recreating it down to the finest detail in your mind. Repeat this, and your ability to focus will gradually improve. There are apparently some people who remember the books they've read as the lines of printed type, but that's the exception to the rule. Generally speaking, the scenes you imagined while reading are what stay with you. Personally, I find remembering things I've never actually seen kind of enjoyable. With adequate imagination, you can go almost anywhere and become anyone. Immersing yourself in that illusionary freedom can make it for a nice change of pace from reality. Not to say that I read purely for such practical reasons. <laughs> Hi, Michiru. I can appreciate that Yumiko can just shut people down. To be honest, Michiru, I'm under the impression that you exercise less than anyone else in this room. Even Amine puts some effort into keeping up that figure, you know. Alright, let's tone down the braggadocia a bit, Michiru. <laughs> no, don't make her lies start crumbling. He gads. Before Michiru can even finish her sentence, Sakaki thrusts out an arm with no wind-up. Her empty fist, clenched as if holding an imaginary box cutter, comes to an abrupt halt an inch before Michiru's face. Not half bad for an amateur. If she'd been trying to kill, there'd already be a blade stuck right between Michiru's eyes. <laughs> well, that's game. A good half second after the outcome settled, Michiru leans her upper body backward a little. I don't think I've ever seen a backward sway quite this sluggish before. Does the girl have anemia or what? 
I've seen better, to be honest. To be even more honest, I don't think I've even seen worse. A perfect failure, one might say. A, fri a fight hinges on your ability to formulate split-second tactics, but Michiru is so incompetent that she didn't even recognize the danger she was in. Such utter obliviousness is almost charming. Sorry, but I think this match is settled. A bit of a stretch to even call it a match. This girl doesn't even seem to realize Sakaki was taking it easy on her. I think she may need to learn her place. Sakaki, let's try that again. And this time, don't stop. I authorize you to hit her. Um, I don't think you have the authorization to be like, it's okay to punch people. Yeah, that's exactly why I'm saying this. <laughs> Michiru probably doesn't even know what hit her. She closed her eyes reflexively at the sharp jab of pain in her forehead, and before they opened again, Sakaki had already brought her arm back to its previous position. From Michiru's perspective, there's no evidence that Sakaki even moved. This bottle blonde stares uncomprehendingly at her foe, trying to understand how she was attacked. Huh. A splendid poke to the forehead. <laughs> oh, we're Jedi, so... We know you don't leave that box cutter ev ever. Give it up before you get a concussion. I don't need you getting KO'd by flicks to the head. I, I, I think Mitru is suffering from lag in real life. Like, everything for Michiru happens two seconds after it actually happens. <laughs> you gonna get slapped again. Or worse. <laughs> that may have been the fastest apology I've ever heard. <laughs> Yes, that she is. <laughs> you know, Michiru, one of the least attractive qualities someone can have is when they cannot admit that they did something wrong. <laughs> no, I think you just suffer from real-life game lag. Well, let's see. She was pulling her punches pretty severely, so you could hardly call that a legitimate competition. Cheating in a broad sense of the word, I suppose. Uh, that seems to be a low blow. Is that your idea of plain fair? That's not what the Bible says. Oh, you're aware. Take it down a notch, why don't you? No need to try so hard. What? Punskadon, eh? Something like a Mastodon, perhaps? In that case, would the Punska in question be some famous paleontologist? Oh, hi, Amine. Where did you come from? Oh, if it is an Amine. Were you listening in? I was just trying a little comedy of my own. No, I think weird is apt. That's not a compliment, is it? I get the message. Poor Michiru. She has to deal with an alternate personality and in game in re, and real life game lag. That's a rough hand to be dealt in life. True, that's just the way she is. <laughs> uh, 
I still remember when she asked to kiss me. It was weird, but I kind of liked it. <laughs> oh wait, that that's not Fruit of Grisea. That's the trailer for High School Musical 4. All of a sudden, I recall my recent kiss with Michiru. If you could call it that. It was so abrupt, and she seemed so unconcerned about it after the fact. I can almost believe the whole thing was just a dream. But I'm honestly less interested in the kiss itself than the other Michiru that delivered it. The Michiru I spoke with on the High Ridge wasn't the Michiru I know. That wasn't just an unusual mood or something. She was acting like an entirely different person. But since then, Michiru has been the same as always. I doubt anything will come from pursuing it. Okay, as much as I don't like Aminate, the way she went, OI! was, was kind of cute. <laughs> huh? What's wrong? Just thinking about something. <laughs> well, yes, but actually, no. <laughs> yeah, I guess. A little. I mean, she has a cute design, but her personality be stank. That's c actually, that's kind of all the girls in this game. Are you sure she seems like she'd be fun to hang out with, though? But also annoying. Uh, hi. No, no we did not. Yes, I know. You don't need to get combative over every little thing. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Amine. <laughs> it means I'm on the Michiru route. The Michiru. <laughs> ah, don't worry about it. I did say something to that effect, but it's not anything worth getting worked up about. Okay, bye. Deciding it best to withdraw before the situation takes a turn for the troublesome, I quickly leave the classroom behind. Ooh, where's this gonna go? I have nothing to say. The end. Oh. <laughs> oh, Michiru, you do have the best facial expressions and the best sound effects. Seems like the troublesome ship has already sailed. Sheer carelessness on my part. Women are, as a general rule, natural-born gossipers. I shouldn't have given Amine anything to work with. Huh. Oh my gosh, she's literally just following us. Hmm, alright, doubt she chased me this far. Well, hey, Michiru is an athletic expert, so she's going to be able to keep up with us. You didn't have to follow me, you know. Well, if she's this determined, running around to escape would be troublesome in its own right. Suppose I could try being honest. What? <laughs> nah, that's impossible. For the moment, I look into Michiru's face and carefully observe her expression, looking for anything suggestive of the other girl's presence. It's okay, I just want to stare at you. It's pretty normal. But my friend from the ridge seems to be out of the house at present. This seems to here is definitely the normal Michiru. I don't know if that is! Again, again, I think with multiple personality disorder, you generally have one main personality, then you develop alternate ones over time. So I'm not sure if this right here is the alternate personality, or if the other one is. That's interesting. Like, maybe she developed this personality because she really identified with some of the Sundaris in the manga she was reading. I don't know. 
She ineptly attempts a harsh-toned bluff, counterproductively drawing attention to the fundamental weakness of spirit she's trying to hide. And she currently doesn't even realize I've seen through her. Textbook Michiru. What? Please concisely explain what the Geneva Convention is. ジュネーブさんが考えた貴重な動物が絶滅しないようにユニオンなどを制限するやつでしょ。特徴が亀についてでしょ。<笑> huh, I think you're talking about the Washington Convention. Either way, what exactly does your face have to do with the international trade in endangered tortoises? Come to think of it, I've been focusing exclusively on the girl's expression and the tone of her voice. Might have overlooked some revealing physical change. Shifting my focus, I resume my scrupulous observation of Michiru's face. Even as I lean into extremely short range, Michiru makes no effort to flee. Probably her stubborn pride as a Sundari at work. True, the girl's breathing is a little is a little rough through her nose, and her eyes are darting around frantically, but by Mitra's standards, she's managing to keep it together. I see. Is there something on your face? Mitra is the same as always. However, I have made a discovery that seems of potential interest. Kind-hearted individual that I am, I decide to share my feelings with the girl. All right, my observations are complete. There's nothing on your face. Your skin is clean, smooth, and youthful, as one might expect of a teenage girl. I didn't detect dirt, encrusted bits of food, or any other blemishes of external origin. There is, of course, a possibility you're infested with face mites, but that's impossible to determine with the naked eye. I feel like Mitru would be the one who's most into hygiene. However, you do have a bit of a mustache. Rude. Calm yourself, it's only a little peach fuzz. Stands out a bit at very close range. In any case, there's no truth to the old wives' tale about shaving making it grow back heavier, so deal with it as you wish. Yuji, because he has no tact. You're the one who asked if there was something on your face. I just answered the question. This poor girl. Don't let it get to you. Nobody's going to laugh at a young woman just because a little she has a little hair under her nose. If you drink, even if you drink a big glass of milk and end up with a bright white mustache, I'll wipe it clean off of you like any halfway decent person would. Only a grade schooler would mock you for something like that. Mitru, you've been insulted worse like five different times in this visual novel alone. People have been quite cruel to you. That's a relief to know that she doesn't have very many lewd scenes, because Sachi had a couple. Sachi only had one that I had to actually blur out, and by that I mean just change to a black screen. But I feel like me—I feel like Michiru would be like the least interested in that, to be honest. So I'm—I'm—I'm I'm, I'm happy with to hear that. I was trying to be considerate, but it seems I've somehow managed to earn Michiru's enmity. As always, cross-gender diplomacy can be neatly summarized with the phrase, pain in the ass. No reason to work yourself into a frenzy. I wasn't just trying to tease you, alright? I had a reason for observing you. Eh? Hmm. I don't mind, but I doubt you'd be of much help. Can't say I really understand the situation that well myself. That's so. Well, I'm equally baffled by you, Michiru. I've come to think of you as somewhat of a mysterious woman. 
<laughs> the cheesy smile is one of my favorite sprites. That's like a f the female equivalent of the Gaston smile, and it's hilarious. Batter? You seem to be misunderstanding something here. Anyway, long story short, I don't understand what you did to me. It seemed completely unlike you. Why is she so close now? Michiru draws closer, visibly unsettled by my choice of words. I wasn't trying to imply anything in particular, but maybe I hit a sore spot. I don't know if spelling it out is going to make this any less incomprehensible, but I'm talking about what you did to me the other day. So you don't remember? Kind of suspected as much. We went to first base, so to speak. You insisted. Just... I would I assume Japan doesn't have the same baseball lingo for steps in romantic relationships, so I'm pretty sure they would actually have to translate that to first base, and that they're talking about something else. Maybe not! Japan does have baseball, but it's not as big as it is in America. I think she's probably taking first base a little too literally, but I'd feel so ridiculous explaining, actually explaining the metaphor that I'd decide to let her figure it out for herself. How would I know why? You're the one who started the whole thing, not me. <laughs> Oh, are we are we going to kiss her again? Okay, if we kiss her again. If we kiss her again, she's going to probably explode. Look, you're going to regret this. Listen carefully. When I say first base, I mean Why did she make a barfing noise? Also, she's someone has been watching my backyard baseball streams. <laughs> I don't think you do, Michiru. Look, it's a meta. Yes and no. No ballparks were involved. You're not even in the right time zone. Oh, no. You want me to show you first base? Like we did the other day? I really don't. Alright then, if you insist, I'll give you a little demonstration. Clearing my throat, I approach Michiru. <laughs> we get a special CG just for freaking her out by kissing her. This is gonna be great! <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is bad. We can't do that from a distance, you know. That's sort of how it works. This. Holding Mitra's chin steady between my thumb and index finger, I press my lips against hers. It's the same kind of abrupt kiss that she gave me the other day. I don't think there was any ton involved back then, so I keep things simple. Oh, welcome back, Marty. Yeah, um, you missed a lot. So, I'm 99% sure Michiru has multiple personalities, and one of her personalities, like, asked to kiss us, and now she's trying to figure out what happened, and now we're kissing her other personality. That's, that's what I'm getting from this. It's weird, but it's also kind of intriguing. Michiru stares at me from point-blank range, an expression of blank incomprehension on her face. 
This isn't really a romantic vein, so I keep my eyes open as well. Maybe it would have been better manners to shut them. Well, whatever. Hardly matters. After a moment, I slowly pull back. Our lips clean together for a brief, reluctant moment, and then part with a small smack. So ends our second visit to first base. Um, what? <laughs> Why did you do that again? <laughs> Why did you go for a third time? Also, my gosh, that's kind of creepy. Mitru's eye right there. There you go. First base. Mitru's eye is creepy here. It's staring into my soul. This is what you did to me the other day. I don't understand why that happened, but... And I'm getting the idea that you don't either, right? Allow me to explain after the fact. First base is a common metaphor for kissing. Baseball had nothing to do with it. Any questions? Go ahead, then. Oh, no, we broke her. I thought she would explode, but instead she's just malfunctioning. Yeah, <laughs> things escalate quickly. Or very, very slowly. One or the other. No questions after all? Why does it... If we're talking to her, why is it still giving us the CG of us, like, full-on kissing her? Alright then, dismissed. Return to your post. And now we're inside again. I'm not sure myself what her post is supposed to be, but I guess that's a wrap for the moment. Yeah, we, we broke her. She can only say one thing now. Um, so Marty, keep in mind that we got to skip the prologue this time. And the prologue was like 35 hours or something. But yeah, things are picking up faster in the Michiru route than they were in the Sachi route. At least... The game hasn't officially revealed she has multiple personalities, but, like, I don't see what else it could be at this point. This is about Michiru, I assume. Don't worry about it. Uh, just your everyday case of temporary insanity. Oh wait, maybe Yuji is still a robot, and he electrocuted her when he kissed her. Yeah, but it's nothing to get too. Hmm. I didn't think she'd be this badly shocked. Now I feel a little bad. You could argue it was bad? You could argue it was good. It was probably bad, though. <laughs> yes, Sachi, I, I shoplifted and ga something and gave it to her. Well, I shoplifted some ramen a candy for her. Well, no, she's the one who asked me to do it, so this is ultimately her fault. <laughs> yes, she shoplifted. Listen to what I'm saying. Shoplifting was not involved. Well, there's only one crime, murder, so... Uh, a little visit to first base. I am surprised Sachi actually interpreted that as the metaphorical first base. No, but she did ask me to do it. Yuji, the, by tomorrow, the entire world is going to know about this. Sachi is going to post on Facebook that Michiru asked to kiss Yuji, and then all the other girls are going to be like, What? I'm going to kill her. Manly Amine. I imagine so. I don't understand it myself, currently. Okay, then. See you later, I guess. Judging from that reaction, Michiru doesn't have much romantic experience. There's a good chance that was that girl's second, first kiss. Considering her age, it'd be a little on the late side, but everyone in this school has their circumstances. Probably doesn't make sense to measure them against typical standards. Isn't she only, like, 15? That's not that old to get a first kiss.
Seems there's a possibility I've traumatized Michiru. Guess the girl might actually have been a bit of a sheltered princess. Oh, hey, you alright? Hmm, didn't pick up on this earlier, but maybe you're imagining a sports car engine? One of those prancing horses? Imitating. Ignoring my attempt at lightening the mood, Michiru silently retrieves her canister of ramen candies from the shark pouch around her waist, then pours a huge pile onto her palm. Hey, that seems like a little much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Whoever, whoever is Michiru's voice actress, I hope she won an Oscar for this performance. It's like you're eating sand. You all right there, Michiru? Plot twist, she hates Ramane. Michiru abruptly sprays great globs of half-chewed candy, vaguely resembling rotten chunks of tofu out of her mouth. Did no one ever teach this girl to value her food? Michiru, my friend, it seems that you ate too much at once. Uh-oh, ribbon tears have come back. She ain't having a good day, folks. Oh, she probably hated the... taste of our lips, and she's trying to wash it away with ramen -ay. But then the combination was really bad. I would imagine so. Why don't you take it easy for a while, Sachi? I'll leave the rest to you. <laughs> and so Michiru and I learned a valuable lesson about the dangers of overeating. Not that either of us were particularly happy about it. 